to him. Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, and uh, verse number 1, that's the theme verse for the conference, and I'm going to uh, talk to you just a little bit about that, and kind of give you a, just a different thought about that verse today. I appreciate all the work that went in for the meals, um, Mrs. Dallas, John Boy's Barbecue, and our Spanish church kind of team effort and uh, did a good job on our meals. And of course, all the, the folks that chip in and do stuff that nobody sees, cleaning and, and doing all that stuff, uh, that, uh, that if, if we didn't have it, it wouldn't matter. The message today will kind of tell you why they do it, um, kind of their motive, um, motive for ministry, really, and, um, and it'll help you with yours. Because I think sometimes we, we question that. You know, I, I remember when, and even now, sometimes I, I even make the statement, we need to teach people the why, not just the what. Right. How many of you have ever made that statement? And, um, and I understand that statement and the heart behind that statement, but, but I really think sometimes we even miss the real why. Because sometimes when we say the why, it's not really the why we say it is. Um, Romans, Romans kind of gives us the why, uh, the real why. Um, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, let's read it. A familiar passage of Scripture, most of you could quote it. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, that I, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to talk to you about the why. The why. Lord, I pray that you would bless the message. Fill me with your power and your spirit. I pray that you would speak to the hearts of every young person, Lord, and even the workers. Lord, to just let us know why we do what we do, why we are who we are. And I pray that you would speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible here, in this very familiar passage of Scripture, in Romans 12, changes from the previous tone of Romans 1 through 11. Romans 1 through 11 tells us that we're sinners. That's where we get the Romans road. Romans 3, we're sinners. Romans 5, we're sinners. Romans 6, we're sinners. Romans 7, we're sinners. Are you catching the theme? <laughs> Romans 8, wait a second, there's hope. Romans 9, Romans 10, Romans 11. And then Romans 12 sort of turns it. And if you have a Bible that kind of gives you like the subject of the chapters, it probably has something, something above Romans 12 that says something like this, Christian life and service or Christian ministry. And Romans 12 sort of turns it after that and it, it, and it sort of turns to... Okay, now that you know you're a sinner, you've found hope in Christ or salvation in Christ, here's what to do. And 12 through 16 of the book of Romans tells us what to do after we get saved. So it kind of fills in that blank. And that's where Romans 12, 1 is. You just thought it was that verse that the preacher always pulled out when he wanted you to surrender to the will of God. Right? That conference verse. No, it, it, it was there on, on purpose. Let's back up into Romans 11 just a little, and I'm going to show you the why. Go to Romans 11, and let's start in verse 30. Okay? Romans 11 and verse 30. Stay with me, I'll get, to preach. I'll get to the preaching, preaching in just a second, okay? i got to kind of lay a little Bible foundation. It's always a you know, good idea. 
For as ye, as ye in times past have not believed God. Okay? That's Romans 1 through 7. Right? We just covered that. Everybody agree with that? We're all sinners. Does everybody agree with that? Now listen, just a minute ago we were singing that song, I Was uh, Wretched and Poor. Y'all remember that? Most of you have never been wretched and poor. Yes or no? How many of y'all would say, but David, I mean, I'll just be honest, I, I've never really been wretched or poor. I mean, maybe the worst thing you ever did was steal cookies from the nursery thing. I've, I've never really, really been wretched or poor as far as man's eyes. I mean, I've never really been wretched or poor. Raise your hand. Come on, be honest. Listen, you have to, all, but listen, you have to see yourself in God's eyes as wretched or poor, wretched and poor. You do. Because if you don't see yourself as wretched and poor, if you don't understand the Bible says you're a sinner, you can't be saved. Because why do you need to be saved if you're not lost? Everybody understand that? You've got to be lost before you can be saved. The problem is, is if you're never... And, and I'm not saying that you have to be so wretched and poor in man's eyes first. You, ain't have, you don't have to have my testimony to be saved. I think it's wonderful for you to have your testimony and be saved. And you may wish you could have mine. I wish I could have yours. I would trade. And I think I would be as excited. I think I would be more excited to have yours than I am to have mine. Let's keep going. Verse 30. For as in times past you have not believed God. That's Romans 1 through 7. Yet now have obtained what? Okay, don't forget that word. Very important. Through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now believed. All right, that's Romans 8 through 11. Okay. Romans 10 says what? Romans 10, 13. Uh, wait, never mind. Uh, we missed that question, didn't we? <laughs> Uh, I don't know who was up here. I just heard about that. I was pr I'm praying it ain't my Bible quiz team. Uh, uh, for who? <laughs> Sorry. That was mean, wasn't it? Uh, for whosoever shall call. I got my Bible open. I'm looking down now because I don't mess it up. For whosoever, because that would be really bad. For whosoever shall, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right? So that's, that's what that's talking about in that verse, okay? Now, let, let's keep going. Verse 32, for God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have what? Don't forget that word upon all. Oh, the depth of riches, both the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor or who hath first given to him and, and, shall be, and, it, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Now, don't forget the, the verse before he starts praising God. Don't forget the verse before that where it says this. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might, what? Mercy. Have mercy. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by mercies. Now, let's, let's look at Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. That's the preaching. Beseech means to plead, to ask, to beg. That's the preaching. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. That's the presentation. That's where you give yourself to God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. That's that presentation. Holy and acceptable unto God. That's the pleasing. I want to be acceptable to God. We all live to be acceptable to someone. And so I, I just don't want to, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, 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 I'm not trying to just fit in. Oh, you're fitting in somewhere. You're trying to fit into somewhere. 
Why not try to be acceptable to God? Because you're going to be with Him a lot longer than you're going to be with those three friends in high school. Acceptable to God. That's the pleasing. Then it says this, which is your reasonable service. That's the production. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the principles. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's the plan. We hear a lot of preaching about the presentation and the pleasing and the production and the principles and the plan. Right? We do. And we always ask, our quest, or we always ask ourselves this question. Why should I? Or why is that important? Or why is that? Or why is that true? Or why should I obey that? Or why and why and why? And maybe you don't ask yourself that question, but I did when I was a teenager. If I heard something that I didn't know already, I would take my Bible very respectfully Go to my father-in-law, who was an assistant pastor. He was my bus captain. He picked me up on a church bus, all right? And uh, I married his daughter. She was my prize for being good on the bus. <laughs> Be careful what you pick up, because you might bring it home. <laughs> so uh, I'd take it to him, and I would say, uh, show, w could you show me that in here? Now listen, pastors, youth pastors, if you preach it, you ought to be able to show it in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be real honest with you. That there might have been a generation before that you could just say it and not show it. You ought to be able to show it. It ought to be in this book. If you're going to preach it, it ought to be in the book. I'd go to my father-in-law and I'd say, hey, uh, can you show me this? One time he preached on the movie house. I said, uh, can you show me that? And he said, no. I can't show you movie houses in the Bible. I think my phone's in my pocket and it's messing up. He said, I can't. But I can show you principles. He started showing me principles. And he said, not just about movie houses, but movies in general. Now, he did give me a book by John R. Rice, but it was written in the 50s. <laughs> I'm just going to be real honest with you. You need to get Dr. Jorgensen's book. It's the updated version. <laughs> I'm reading that book by John R. Rice. It's like moving pictures. <laughs> now, I love some John R. Rice, but I'm just saying, I mean... I took it back to my father and I said, I read your book. Um, you got anything like written in the 1900s? <laughs> so get Dr. Jorgensen's book, it'll help you. I took my Bible to him and I said, hey, uh, can you show me? I want to know why. Now listen, that was a teenager really wanting to know why. I really had a sincere desire. Now if you're a teenager like that and you're struggling with something, I'm going to help you today. Maybe not with like, hey, here's where it says in the Bible, but with that desire. Because here's the real why for the preaching. Let me tell you why we get up here and we cry out and spare not. And we lift our voices and your preacher, man, he gets up and he yells and he screams and, he, and, and man, he, he's excited about what he says and why he reproves and rebukes and exhorts and, and why he cares so much and why, why, why he does what he does. And, and, and let me just tell you why it is. It's that one little word there in, in verse, uh, or chapter 12 in verse number 1. Watch it now. I beseech you therefore, brethren, watch this now. Why is he beseeching? Why is he begging? Why is he pleading? Watch this. By what? The what? Mercy. Let me tell you why I get to do this. Not because I'm any better than you. I don't deserve a, a clap, an award. You know what mercy is? Not getting what you deserve. 
for the wages of sin is death. You know, every single person in this room deserves death. Now listen to me, if that rubs you the wrong way or makes you feel bad, or you're like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> you may, but I don't. Let me tell you something right now. You need to get saved. You got a problem with being a sinner. That's why so, you know what the Bible says, he that wins souls is wise. Because the very first lesson that we teach people at the door is the Bible says, all have sinned. And some of you would do good to knock on some doors and go over point number one, not just for the sinner, but for you. To remind yourself that the tie you wear and the dress you wear and the music you listen to does not change the fact you're a sinner. And the only reason you get to go to heaven, the only reason you're in church, the only reason that you deserve anything is mercy. Mercy. I get to preach because of mercy. Mercy. The presentation. Presenting my body a living sacrifice. Giving myself to God. Luke 18 tells a story about the sinner who goes to God and there's a guy beside him who goes in and he says, Oh Lord, I'm so glad I'm not like this guy. Might have been some of y'all like that this week. Well, Lord, I just thank you that I'm not like that one. Now listen, in case you're wondering, all right, other than eating and breathing, I'm probably against it. Okay, I got standards and convictions. All right, I'm just not a Pharisee. I love people. And you can do both. You ain't got to be the brother that went into the far country. And you ain't got to be the brother that stayed home and was a, was a Pharisee. You can be a servant. And you know who the father uses? The servants. Check the Bible. I just be a servant. So um, that guy comes in. He says, uh, Lord, I'm just thankful I'm not like him. Guy comes in. He falls on his knees. Starts beating his chest. He says, God, be merciful. Merciful. You know what he's saying? He was saying, be merciful to me, a sinner. He was, he was referencing the mercy seat from the Old Testament. Where they offered the blood sacrifice. That's what the word mercy means. Uh, in, in the Bible, uh, is, in the New Testament references, is that mercy seat where the sacrifice was laid to, uh, to pay that penalty. That's, where, that's that sacrifice. When I give myself to God, listen, I'm not like, hey God, uh, hey, you know, uh, this is a pretty nice uh, gift here, God. You know what I mean? I mean, do you know what you're getting? You know what allows you? Listen, God doesn't have to have you. But He wants you. Even though you're a sinner. That's mercy. You know why you should present yourself to Him? You know why you should give yourself to Him? Because of His mercy. Because even though you don't always want Him, He always wants you. I beseech you therefore, brethren, why do we preach? Mercy. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Why? Why should I give my life to God? Mercy. Mercy. Then it says this, 
holy and acceptable in God. The book of Titus chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mm -hmm, mercy. Holy and acceptable in God. You know why we, um, later on, um, the reason we work to, or, or we try our best to please God. And by the way, by the way, nobody is perfect. But if I'm going to strive in my life to please someone, I want it to be God. Why would I not choose Him? You know, the goal of spiritual growth is not information, it's transformation. We'll get to that in a minute, but, but I, I want to I I please God with my life. You know, the, the goal is not to be liked by man, it's to be like Christ. The goal is not to be liked by man, it's to be like Christ. Then you see, let's keep reading, holy and acceptable unto God, watch this now, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. You know why it's reasonable? Mercy. You deserved hell. Hell. Fire. Darkness. Torment. Oh, but Brother Davis, I mean, I never did anything wrong. C.1. Because that's a major problem. You deserved hell. But mercy. You know the people that run around and they're always at your church and they're always doing stuff? They're probably the people who understand mercy. Think about it. And hold tight, but listen. The people that take that silver spoon and flip it up and take advantage of mercy. Are the ones that never run a vacuum cleaner and never carry a table and could care less about soul winning. And you say, well, they're lazy. Not just that. They don't really understand mercy. They don't like the bus ministry. They don't, like, they don't understand mercy. You're a young person in here, and you've got a bus ministry in your church, you've got a soul winning ministry in your church, and you're not actively knocking doors. Let me, let me just tell you something. Let me just tell you something. You don't understand mercy. You don't now. I realize COVID is excuse for everything. Trust me, I learned that yesterday. I apologize for the hiccup at the ice center. Won't happen again. But our production. Listen to the. You know uh, our reasonable service because of mercy. It is reasonable for God to ask me to do anything because He saved my soul. If he asked me, if, if he said right now to me, go out there and count every one of them gravels out there, that's reasonable. Because he saved me from hell. So if God wanted to call you to Africa, it's not unreasonable. For a preacher to get up and say, hey, listen, we need some missionaries. We need some of you to forget about making money. And we get mad. Oh, well, I'm the preacher all the time talking about preaching. Uh, not everybody come to preach. Everybody got some mercy, didn't they? Maybe somebody ought to think about some mercy they got. Pay a little back. Well, we don't really owe God. We'll never really pay back God. You know, we ought to just, you know, celebrate and praise God a little bit. They don't understand mercy. I... I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he didn't owe. That's mercy. I got to hurry. I got two more. Listen now, the principle. The principle. Be not conformed unto the world, but be transformed. Daniel 9.18 says that, that it's, 
it's not for righteousness, but for mercy that they were bringing their prayers to God. And, and, and listen, I don't separate from the world. Don't miss this, okay? I don't not do stuff, okay? The stuff I don't do. I don't not do it so that I'm better than you. I got mercy from God, so I do it so I can be closer to Him. Do you understand? I want to be close to Him. I want to be close to the one that gave me mercy. Not close to His enemy. You understand? If these two guys, y'all the only two left, so y'all, y'all follow in there. So if these two guys were enemies, okay, they're not, don't worry. But if, if Brother Young was the, was the world and Dr. Jorgensen was the Lord, listen, and the Bible says that to be friends with the world is at, to be at enmity with God. If I'm friends with him, I am his enemy. That means if I separate from him, I'm, I'm getting closer to him. That means every time I turn off the show, when it... When, I turn off the show that's bad. I'm saying, oh, wait, the Lord gave me mercy. I, I, should, I shouldn't be watching this. I love him more than I love him. It has nothing to do with, well, the preacher said we shouldn't watch this. He gave me mercy. It's for mercy. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed. It's about being transformed, being like him. Why would I want to be like his enemy if I love him? Listen, separation is not hard. We make it hard. And we make it humanistic. And we want to blame stuff. And we want to, we want to find reasons why we don't and why we can't. And, and why it's outdated and why we shouldn't. And if you believe all this stuff, and, and you can find a reason. And you can reason why. And you can come up with, 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 with all this stuff of why uh, we shouldn't and why we don't. But listen, when it all boils down to it, all you're doing is being selfish. And spitting in the face of the one that showed you mercy. Thanks for the blood. But I'm going to side with him. Thanks for the blood. But I'm going to show my thighs. Thanks for the blood, but I'm going to wear my pants. Thanks for the blood, but I'm going to watch my movies. Thanks for the blood, but I'm going to listen to my rap music. Thanks for saving me from hell, but I'm going to say whatever I want, go where I want, do what I want. Now, you may not say those words with your mouth, but you do with your actions. Mercy says, that's the world, that's God. He showed me mercy. They've done nothing for me. Last thing. The plan. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When it comes to the will of God, as I said last, um, the other day, it's not some mystical, crazy thing you can't explain. It's the wants of God. What does God want? Listen to this verse, 2 Corinthians Corinthians 4. Therefore we received the ministry, or therefore received ministry as we have received mercy. Now how much mercy did God give me? The Bible says that His mercies are what? Huh? New when? Every single day, more and more and more mercies. Now, if he's pouring mercy on me every single day, the Bible says there in 2 Corinthians that that, that, ministry, his, that his ministry was as his mercy. So it says, therefore receive ministry as we receive mercy. What he was saying is, is my ministry ought to mimic the mercy I received. So how much mercy did you get? 
You ever notice that the guys that are, like I said earlier, with service, the guys that are the most committed sometimes are those who receive mercy or understand mercy. Because, listen, you think I got more mercy than you did. Because I did a bunch of stuff before I got saved that you didn't do. But I want to tell you something right now. You, it took the same amount of mercy for you as it did for me. No more. I may be as more excited or you may, you may let me get more excited than, than you do. But listen, God saved you from the same hell I, as he saved me from. You were just as much a sinner as I was. Your list may not have been as long, but the penalty was the same. It took the same mercy. Don't be dead about it. You were just as lost. So here's the plan. Prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Why? Mercy. Why should I let God tell me what He wants? Because of mercy. I'm going to let Him tell me where He wants me to be in eternity, right? Oh, wait. No, 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 no. The reason you got saved was because you wanted to go to heaven. Right. Right. And you brought that selfish decision into your Christian service. Well, I want to go to heaven because I don't want to go to hell. It makes sense. But it don't make servants. Are you with me? It makes sense. I don't want to go to hell either. That's why I got saved. <laughs> but you can't think like that and be a good servant. I gotta let him decide. I gotta let him decide. So the plan, mercy. One illustration, and I'm done. Victor Hugo in Les Miserables tells a story about a guy named Jean Valjean. He's allowed to stay in a in a bishop's home when he's recently released from prison. He rep he repays the bishop by stealing the bishop's silverware. He's on the run. And uh, he gets caught by the police. The police bring him back to the bishop's house. And when he brings back, the bishop's shocked that he stole his silverware. And the bishop's thinking quick on his feet. He looks at Gene and he says, oh, actually that silverware belongs to him. Gene looks at the bishop. He looks at the police. And, um, he's, and uh, G, uh, the bishop says to Gene, says, oh, hey, by the way, you forgot the uh, silver candlesticks that go with it. Be sure you take those too. And Gene looks at the bishop and he looks at the police. And the police leave. And then the bishop looks at the convict. And he says, Gene, do not forget. Do not ever forget. That today you promised to use this money to become an honest man. Now, Gene, who had no recollection of ever promising anything like that, remained speechless. The bishop lowered his voice but emphasized his tone. Gene, my brother, you no longer belong to evil, but to good. It's your soul I'm buying back. The spirit, from the spirit of perdition, and I'm giving it to God. And he told Gene to do good. Let me tell you what he showed him there. Because he could have sent him to prison again. He showed him mercy. Now, obviously, that wasn't salvation. Don't miss the point. But that's a human way to show a person mercy. Let me tell you what God did for us. He showed us mercy. Why? Why? Because he has a plan for your life. If he did not have a plan, he wouldn't have left you here or he wouldn't have saved you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. You ever wonder why? You ever wonder why? 
Next time you hear a preacher preach and you're like, I, I, I wonder why we should do that. Or I wonder why he said that. Or I wonder why that's a truth. Or I wonder why my preacher. Listen, hey, first thought that should come to your mind. Even before you say, hey, where's that at in the Bible, preacher? First thought that should come to your mind. Well, the Lord saved me. And if God t told me to do that, I ought to do it. Well, the Lord saved me. And if God wants me to do that, I'll do it. Whether it has to do with your appearance or your activity, whatever it is, God saved me. If he wants me to do that, I'll do it. Why? Why do you do that? Why do you go to church three times a week? Why do you uh, wear that? Why do you uh, not go there? Why do you do I'll tell you why. Oh, because you're Baptist. Nope. Because you go to this church. Nope. Because you go to Christian school. Nope. Why? Mercy. Because I was lost. On my way to hell. And God saved me. That's why. Lord, I pray that you would speak to hearts. If anybody here is not saved or they've never seen themselves as a sinner, God, I pray today they would see themselves as lost in need of salvation before they die and go to hell. And God, I pray that they'd be saved today. And Lord, every single young person that's saved, I pray that God, they would see the reason why for the preaching and the reason why for the principles and the reason why for the plan is mercy. Mercy. Because of you, God. Help us, I pray in Jesus' name.